folks at home welcome back to the backyard bass pond and i have some exciting news for you guys so if you all have been following the channel over the past couple years we have two pet bass bonnie and clyde there's clyde and there's bonnie and we've raised them in an aquarium for two years and uh, and one of our most asked questions is will bonnie ever spawn in the tank and last year she actually made a nest but she never did spawn and so i was excited to see this year when we finally got the pond built if she would spawn for the first time and when I walked out here earlier, she wasn't down there in her typical spot. Normally she hangs out in the deep end, kind of like she's doing right now, but she wasn't anywhere to be found. And I stepped out here on this rock and she shot off. She was sitting right there in the shallowest part of when we first built this pond. That's kind of what we had in mind. We built one little small pocket right there and I just called it like a spawning pocket. And she shot off as soon as I walked out here and I wasn't 100% sure. So I had to go inside. We have an underwater camera right there. I went inside to check the camera and sure enough, she's been making her bed. And she actually has a little white spot that she got whenever she was chasing some of these golden shiners around. She hit her head on a rock right down here below. But you can see that she's wanting to stay up here. Clyde's kind of running her off, but she's trying to get back up here to this area. I think I'm gonna check the water temperature. Our temperature is extremely high. This is, fit. we're still late February. We've already had some 80 degree weather days. And in a small pond like this, that water will heat up really quick. So my camera got a little bit of algae on it. Watch, sometimes when I walk over here, it'll spook the minnows or the little shiners down there and they'll attack them. I definitely don't wanna mess up anything with her bed. Here's your opportunity. Let's go, Clyde. But let's go take a look at that underwater footage. Now, both of these bass have gained a lot of weight since the last time you saw them. That's probably a result of me stocking a thousand golden shiners in their pond twice. So take a look at this clip of Bonnie. She's the darker one, and I noticed that this morning she started swimming around looking at the rocks. It's like she's trying to find a hard bottom to build her bed. And then she also swims up in the shallows. You can tell she's starting to search now that that water temperature got just right. Now here's a real good look whenever she swims up close. You can see her belly real good. And here in just a second, you can see the actual eggs. Yep, there they are. So she's due any day now. And here's a good clip of the whole gang. We got the catfish shadow out, both of the bass, a bluegill out. So this is at 9 o'clock at night. They're coming out feeding heavily. And one thing I've noticed is that whenever the catfish shadow comes out, the bass just hover around. It's like they're really interested to see what he's doing. But he's doing his job, cleaning up the bottom. And here's a good clip of the crappie outlaw. The bass like to pick on him. They'll nip at his tail, but he doesn't seem to mind. And then Bonnie coming over to investigate the lily pad and see if there's a frog on top of it. Clyde going nuts like usual. <laughs> this is a funny clip where Clyde is eating a lily pad. And he's thinking about going vegan. And a nice profile view of the big bluegill. And Clyde going nuts again. Now, a couple weeks ago, we went out trapping crawfish and we brought two of them home. And we put one of them in our 100-gallon bait tank with our other electric blue crawfish, Heisenberg. And I, like always, I'll let you guys name him. And the name that we decided to go with comes from Ty Gaskin. He says, name him Chester from the Cheeto chip because when you eat Cheetos, your fingers are orange. And this crawfish was really unique. He had really orange tips. So I think that's a perfect name. Ty, send me your info and I'll send you out a prize package. But the other crawfish wasn't doing so well, and we left it up to you. We said, either we're going to feed him to Moby or let him go. And a lot of you guys wanted to see Moby eat his first crawfish, so here we go. All right, folks, this is our 300-gallon aquarium, and that is our smallest pet bass, Moby. We also have a big bluegill named Sheriff, if you're new to the channel. But I've had dozens of comments saying feed 
Moby a crawfish. And I think we finally got one small enough for him to eat. So what I'm gonna do is anytime we bring a net around, he just automatically charges up to the top and smashes whatever we drop in. We're gonna try to fake him out. We're gonna act like we're dropping something in over here and actually drop the crawfish in here because I want it to go down to the bottom. Hopefully Moby can see it and size it up. And I mean, it may still be a little bit big for him, but I don't know. I think Moby will eat anything he can fit in his mouth. So I think he's gonna eat it, but we're about to find out. All right, so we're putting the net up here like we're gonna feed him now. Right there on that side, Liz. Yeah, get him looking that way. All right, that's good. All right, now we got his attention over here. We're not gonna change anything, and Liz is gonna scoop around, go around the wall, and drop him in on this other side. And he shouldn't notice anything. Right now, he knows it's feeding time, but he doesn't know where it's gonna come from. Well, let me stand over here and get his attention. All right, I got his attention. Come here, Moby. All right, drop him in, Liz. All right, there he is. Gosh, he just went over there and crushed him. Look at the claw sticking out. Look at that. Moby just crushed that crawfish way faster than I thought he would. I mean, I should have expected it, but he ate him tail first. I think he bit him, spit him out, and then spun him around and ate him tail first. Let's see if we can see. See, he's crunching him right now. Moby, that is incredible. He will eat anything. Did you guys see how fast he shot from this side of the tank all the way over there as soon as Liz dropped him in? All right, there he is. Gosh, he just went over there and crushed him. It's the first crawfish he's ever seen, and it was just a little natural creek crawfish. But that's what they eat out in the wild. I wanted to actually see him drop down to the bottom and see how a bass would actually, you know, make a plan of attack and approach him from behind or from the front, but... Moby's too aggressive. All right, folks, we just put the thermostat in and check out this temperature. Now, it is February, and our pond temp is almost 75, or it is actually 75 degrees. That is incredible. Here, usually most of the lakes we fish at, or a matter of fact, I was at one the other day that's 58, but it's a lot bigger body of water, and you can tell on days like today where it's sunny outside, this water will warm up really quick so it just dropped down to 74 and a half so 74 to 75 that will make these fish spawn quick because usually bass will move up whenever it's about 65 68 and they'll actually be laying eggs in 72 to 74 degrees so can't wait to see these bama babies so now let's talk about what's going to happen if the eggs hatch what i was thinking about doing we definitely have to take them out of this pond because the other fish we have bluegills and crappie they would definitely eat all the fry so I thought about maybe leaving them, just say if she spawns right up there, maybe just building a little wall or something to where once she leaves the nest, really the only purpose that Bonnie or Clyde would have to get back in there is to protect them. But if I built a wall here to keep all the fish out, I think they could hatch and survive. And then maybe I could take a really fine mesh dip net, bring them all out and put them in my 55 gallon tank because we don't currently have anything in there. So that's my idea right now. If you have any other ideas or maybe a better way to get them out before the other fish eat them, leave that in the comment down below. And folks, I don't know if you can see it, but you could definitely see it in the underwater video. The pollen is definitely taken over. It is basically, it looks like a yellowish orange coat across the surface here, but that's really gonna help. You can see a lot of our plants died we even have some lilies that are starting to come back from the winter there's another good one right there that's just coming up so i'm definitely looking forward to getting all of our aquatics back and you can see all the brown we want all that brown to be gone but spring is here at the bass pond i know a lot of you are still dealing with snow sorry folks that's why you should move down south oh we got our face off with lily the tiger or might i say tiger lily versus bowser the turtle Lily's going after him. She said, if I can just get in there with one paw, I'd have you. Uh-oh. What's happening? Uh-oh. Bowser, you better get down in the water. Lily's making a run for it. Uh-oh. There he goes. Smart Bowser. Get off, buddy. She's licking her lips. Better go now, Bowser. Take the dive. Good move, Bowser. 
I was just coming to rescue you. All right, folks, that is going to wrap up this video. Hopefully, the next time we upload a video, we will have small fry, or at least she will have laid her eggs. So, Bonnie, everybody got their fingers crossed? We're counting on you. Hope y'all enjoyed the video, and we will see you all next time. Children